Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 24th, and it's good to be back home. Went up to, uh, to Vermont last week, spent some time with my dad and brother and sister. Sister's two kids, had, had a great time, I'm gonna talk more about that. But it's good to be home, and I'm gonna be indulging here in a Gran Habano 2002. Uh, these are actually a bargain or economy cigar in my opinion, but they're rather good. I, I enjoy them and uh, I'm going to enjoy this one. So, I managed to not bring a... <laughs> well... One minute. This is, this is my big mug of stuff <laughs> that I sometimes use when I'm working on pipes. And in the big mug of stuff is a handy dandy acid brush, which I've got these scattered all over, but the the hollow end of the acid brush actually makes a very passable cigar punch. So we will turn that in. And if this doesn't work, I'll have to go get a cutter because I don't have my knife on it. But it usually does work. Got a nice. Yeah, it'll be fine. Put the acid brush back in the big mug of stuff. And to light this today, I've got. Let me put this down for a minute. My buddy Mark in Rhode Island is a kind and generous soul, and he sent me a very cool lighter. Uh, you've probably seen these. I've seen them and for a long time been curious about them, but had never uh, gotten around to buying one, and, and Mark was kind enough to send me one. This is an Honest brand. Uh, I'm going to put that so that you can read it. Honest is the brand, and it's one of these... Um, uh, eternal matches or whatever you want to call them so there's a chamber here that you fill with fluid and you unscrew this little rod that has some wicking at the end this picks up the fluid and then there's a flint uh, chamber here and I just poured fluid out I, I haven't quite figured out how to best use this hang on I don't want to light myself on fire during my Sunday chat video that would not be nice but the basic idea is you, you strike it along the side here and you get yourself a nice light. And it actually burns quite well. Um, it's hard to blow out. I've been playing with it as a pipe lighter and it's, it's pretty cool. First time I'm trying it with a cigar, it seems it worked okay. It's easy to blow out like that, but if you try to shake it out, that doesn't work. Well, Mark said he's playing around with different fuels. The instructions say to use oil. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm using Zippo fluid. But I would bet this would work with just regular um, grain alcohol. Um, be interesting to play around with that. So another lighter to add to my gathering. As Mark so aptly put it. So thank you, Mark. I really do appreciate that. He also sent me some wonderful, uh, well, I shouldn't say wonderful because I haven't tried it yet, but I believe wonderful coffee, uh, the Alton Brown multitask of coffee that I've been wanting to try. But I gotta empty my uh, bean hopper of 8 o'clock first, so. It'll be about a week before I can get to that. Now it's nice to occasionally have a cigar though. So, a lot of things I want to talk about today. Uh, before I get into Vermont and, and, and all that, I'm <laughs> I had the strangest experience as I was getting ready to start this video, and I gotta tell you about this because I'm gonna forget it. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm like almost ready to hit start and I, I wanted to show some pictures and stuff and that actually is more complicated than you would think the way I record these things. So I had, I was spending time getting that all set up and I'm just ready to hit record and, and get going with this and the dogs start barking. Now Thatcher and Isabel have different barks. They've got about three that I could probably catalog. They've got the come on, let's play bark, which can be annoying at times. But, uh, you know, it's just them saying, I'm excited, I want to do something with you. Uh, sometimes they bark at one another like that. Sometimes they bark at me or my wife like that. It's not mean, it's not, it's just, hey, look at me. They have the lawn guy bark, which is different. It's unique. It's only used when our lawn guy shows up. I do not understand it because uh, they've, the lawn guy has been here longer than they have. They've never known a seasonal Wednesday when the lawn guy did not show up. And yet every time they go absolutely ballistic. And I got a theory about that, but that's for another, another show. The third bark is there's something wrong. You better get over here. There's, there's somebody in front of the house that's not supposed to be there. Uh, you know, the house is on fire. Thank God that's never happened. But, you know, so, something like that. This is their panic. I need you. you got to see this kind of bark. And I'm about to hit record, and they start barking like that. And they go, okay. Or is it just like, you know, some kid walking his dog by, and they saw him? Or, you know, or is this serious? And they keep going. And, they keep, and I yell up to them to calm them down. And they stop for a moment, but then it starts up again. I say, okay, that's, that's bad. i got to go see what's going on. get upstairs. Isabel's running back and forth between the basement and the living room, barking. Thatcher, who's, who's smaller uh, and who developed a bad habit as a puppy that she maintains <laughs> to this day, is standing in the bay window, barking. So I get him calmed down, I get Thatcher out of the bay window, and I look to see what they're barking at. And, you know, first there's, there's a lot of cars parked in front of the house and around you know, in the street. And I'm thinking, well, okay, that's odd, but what, they don't park at cars. Got an alarm going off here. And I look across the street and across the street and down a bit, there's a corner house that... Uh, a young couple has moved into recently. I haven't met them yet, but they, you know, seem nice, and, and I look forward to meeting them. Just haven't had the time. However, this is—I I still can't quite believe I saw this. The the wife had a group of about maybe twelve to fifteen women in their driveway, and it's a—you know—it's like a two-car driveway, so it's you know fairly wide. She has dumbbells, yoga mats, a, a bench press table, um, a basketball hoop for some reason that wasn't there yesterday. Um, it's, there was, somebody was with, with a jumping rope. She's teaching a fitness class in her driveway <laughs> across the street from the house. And for whatever reason, this has really disturbed my dog. <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, there's nothing out there to bark at. And then I saw it and I said, oh, yeah, that is kind of strange. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm sure they're wonderful people. I, I, I don't know if this is going to be a regular Sunday event, but it's okay. Um, better to do that than a lot of other things that a neighbor could do, I suppose. So I calm the, the dogs down. I put them in their crate with a little peanut butter treat that they enjoy, and they're sleeping it off now. And I'm back at it. So anyway, I had to tell that story because it was just so, you know, Twilight Zone-esque to look out and see that happening. Ah, so before I get into Vermont, I, I did want to update you on the uh, wheelbarrow. And we'll... we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so I'll update you on the wheelbarrow. I got some pictures and stuff. 
update you on the wheelbarrow and then I'll go into talking a bit about the uh, what, what happened in Vermont. You know what, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place here. Let's talk about Vermont first, and then because of the wheelbarrow is one of the pictures, I can I can jump right into that. So, drove up to Vermont on Friday, uh, pretty much an uneventful drive, a very long drive. Took me about eight hours to get there. The big challenge is, um, you know, I'm eating very different than the last time I drove up there. So, finding food on the road was, was not simple. But, you know, I was able to do pretty good with that. Took a long, I think, a total of five billiards and a jar of haunted bookshop, which served me quite well on the way up and the way back. And while I was there, I didn't have a lot of time for pipes, but I got a couple in in the morning and usually one in the afternoon. So I was, I was happy pipe-wise. Got to see my dad. I haven't seen him since before COVID, as well as my sister and brother. Um, talk to them on the phone a lot, but one of the problems is they're, they're, they've got cell phones and their cell phone reception is lousy. So I'll talk to my dad or my brother, and sometimes, sometimes I can talk for half an hour, 45 minutes without issue. Other times I can't talk for more than two minutes without the, the signal getting dropped. So I bought them a cell phone booster and installed it. And this thing is made by a company called WeBoost. Uh, I'll put a link below, no affiliation or anything, but this thing worked really well. Um, took a little bit of time to set up because I had to find a place to mount it and you have to aim it and you have to figure out where the signal's coming from and all that kind of stuff, but not terribly difficult. Uh, you know, I think most people watching this video would be able to do it. And then there's a cable that runs into the house through a, a flat wire that squeezes down in the window and the window sealed beautifully around it so that's not an issue and then you got an indoor antenna and then a booster unit that you have to connect up and then that's it and it worked it just worked uh went from zero to four bars uh just just turning the thing on so pretty impressive it's not magic. The idea is that it's outside in a place where there is a good cell phone signal and it's able to take that signal and transmit it into the house over wires because the signal can't come into the house because of the structure of the house or maybe trees or whatever. Uh, so it makes sense and it works really well. So I highly recommend it if you've got an issue like this. Especially if you live in a more rural area where you might be able to put up a pole and get that antenna up high. But you got to have a signal. It's not going to. It's not going to magically create a signal for you. So I installed that one day, and then we had to do some interesting construction work that I'll that I'll explain. So my dad has oil for heat, and the oil gets delivered by a truck. That you know, anybody that's ever seen oil heater has oil heat. We have oil heat here. You know that. You know, a couple times over the winter, you usually have to have the truck pull up and fill up the tank with oil. And he's lived there for 26 years. He's had the same oil tank for 26 years. And the last time they filled it, they told him, we're not going to fill this again unless you put a roof over the oil tank. Well, that's kind of odd. It's been 26 years, and they just now decided that you need a roof. So Anyway, my job was to put a roof over the oil tank. And I did so. <laughs> so that that was in one day we built a, a two by four structure with a metal roof, not nothing fancy, but it uh, it did the trick. So let me go ahead and and, and show you some stuff here. Um, I think first off, I just want to remind you that there was the whole flaming wheelbarrow incident last uh, last time. That has been taken care of. We now have a nice, uh, well, I won't say new wheelbarrow, but certainly new handles. Once I got the old thing apart and got the new hardware uh, for mounting it back up, it was it was a pretty trivial job. Uh, the bolts that hold the pan on in the front those are those are longer. I think those were six inch total, and I could not get those in the diameter of all the other ones. And I can't remember the diameters, but it was just it was just slightly larger. So I had to do some filing. Fortunately, the 
they go through slots in that bottom, uh, the sort of bottom leg part that you see there, the metal leg part. Uh, it's a slot there so that you can actually adjust it. So I just had to file those slots a little bit wider for, for those two bolts. Everything else went together pretty simply. Oh, one other thing, the front brace that goes across the very front. Uh, the, the handles are a little bit wider than the old one, so I had to reshape that brace a little bit to fit. But it, it, was, it was trivial to, to get it all together once it was apart. And it's working uh, quite nicely. And if you look up at the top of this picture, the very top of this picture, close to the center, you'll see a black blob. That is my dog, Isabel, who is very hard to photograph. So I'm always happy when I catch a picture of Isabel. This is the structure that we built over the oil tank. Uh, again, nothing fancy, mostly two by fours. Could have been built better, and next time I go up, I'm probably gonna have to put some bracing across this, at least in the back, uh, maybe an X brace, just to sort of solidify things, because right now it's just a U-shaped structure. But you can see it's two by fours, metal. It's all pressure treated. There's a metal roof on it that uh, should allow the snow to slide off easily and we put it at a good angle so that they can get a snow rig up there and just pull the snow off uh, if needed. Uh, so that's the, uh, that was that was a big part of my uh, my time in Vermont was getting that thing built. Uh, worked with my nephew who uh, this is the first time we ever did a job together. He's you know getting to an age where he's able to start seriously doing things like that and that was a lot of fun. My dad supervised. He's uh, He's in good health, but he's 77, and uh, you know he's, he's just not getting around like he used to. And a little sad to me because a couple of years ago he would have been the guy doing all the the work, and I would have been the guy handing the tools. And now he's just sitting there watching while me and my nephew do it. But got the job done. But this was not the highlight of the trip to Vermont. The highlight of the trip to Vermont was this. I fell in love with this. I have not convinced my wife that I need to buy this. I'm not going to convince my wife that I need to buy this. This is a 61 Willys. Um, beautiful, beautiful. It needs a new paint job. It needs a lot of body work, but it seemed to be structurally sound. I didn't drive it or get in or anything. It claims to run and drive, you know, with a 61. Who knows? Uh, this is clearly going to be a project car. Four thousand nine hundred dollars, not bad. Uh, could probably get it a little bit cheaper if you know made an offer. Uh, definitely needs some body work. I mean, that's the biggest problem with this is there's a lot of rust on the body. Um, as you can see, it's, it's in particular here at the, at the bottom. Frame seemed to be good. Didn't see a lot of rust in the underbody, but you know you gotta gotta really get in there and check it out. And I didn't. There, there was nobody around. I just was like walking around this taking pictures. Definitely needs a new paint job. Uh, I wouldn't want it to be a silly willy. But uh, yeah, it was it really cool. And it comes pre-stickered with a Grateful Dead sticker. So, you know, what more could you ask for? Anyway, that was that was a fun part of the trip. I really, a big part of me really wanted to buy that. And, and you, uh, you know, just have it as a hobby, a project car. Didn't have an inspection sticker on it, and probably would not pass inspection, and probably would not make the drive from Vermont back to Pennsylvania. So buying it would have involved the trailer and everything. I just, I can't do that. But boy, <laughs> it it was fun to look at and fun to have a little fantasy about while I was while I was there. But that was a trip. Uh, good time. Great to see uh, my family, who I haven't seen in quite a while. Niece and nephew have, you know, become adults, so that's kind of kind of cool. And I mentioned this on my live stream. My brother, on Friday, turned 50 years old. He's my little brother, and he turned 50 years old. And I'm just, I'm baffled by that because if if my little brother's 50, how old am I? Time marches on relentlessly. Ah, the cigar is nice. And the coffee is wonderful. So, 
what else is new? Okay, I, I announced on the Friday live stream that I'm not going to be doing my typical Christmas, uh, Christmas, my typical Halloween video this year. The reason being, uh, I have one planned. I'm about halfway through it, and I just ran out of time. I just i i could i could you know stick something together, but it wouldn't be what I want. You know, I want to do justice to this topic, so I'm going to save it for next year. I am going to do something probably Wednesday, um, spooky little video, uh, something Halloweeny. So there will be something, but it won't be the kind of thing that you're used to uh, if you followed my previous Halloween videos. And if you haven't, I've got a playlist of Halloween videos on my channel, uh, and they're a lot of fun, and, and they're, they're all about uh, either Universal or Hammer Films uh, monster movies, and they're, they're I, I enjoyed making them, and a lot of folks seem to like them this time of year. So go go check them out if you if you haven't seen them. I'll link to the playlist below. So I'm gonna do something this week. It'll be a Halloween themed video, something a little spooky. Uh, so you can look forward to that. And then this Friday on the live stream, we're gonna have a Halloween party, and I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm going to try to get some Halloween trivia together. We'll maybe just talk about, you know, trick-or-treat stories, whatever. Um, if anybody wants to call in with, you know, a spooky ghost story or a funny trick-or-treat story or something like that, love to have you. Just drop me an email at canerodpiper at gmail.com and we'll work it out. Um, it's pretty easy. You know, we, we just have to figure out what you're going to talk about and I'll, I'll call you and put you on, not video, just, just audio. Uh, yeah, five, ten minutes. doesn't have to be a, a big deal. And uh, I'd love to have some folks join in the fun. So if you want to do that, send me an email. We'd love to, love to have you. So what we decided on the Friday live stream is that everybody is going to come to the live stream this coming Friday dressed as a famous pipe smoker. Now, of course, I'm the only person that you'll actually see, so I'm the only one that really needs to have a costume. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to have a costume because I can't think of anything that, yeah, I could just stick together with uh, with things I got around. But we'll we'll see what happens. And you'll notice I, I have hung up and framed the uh, Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff pictures. Uh, thank you, folks that that sent those to me. I really appreciate it. I think that was. Uh, Dean and Michael, um, greatly appreciate it. I love those pictures, and I've got them, got them protected now because there's a lot of dust down here, and I, that was the most important thing, but also prominently displayed, and I like that. I don't know if they're going to stay there because they really deserve to be someplace other than the basement, but for the Halloween season, they're definitely going to stay there. Well, folks, I think... That about uh, covers everything. We've been going for quite a while now. I had some work to do. Unfortunately, I gotta gotta work on a Sunday. It should only take me about an hour to get through this stuff, and uh, then I can hopefully relax a bit and see what my wife is up to. So I hope you're having a great Sunday. Looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. Take care of yourself. Take care of those close to you. Make sure you tell them you love them. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.